as a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. I've heard this proverb so many times in my life, but it was not until today that I fully understood the full extent from a scientific perspective of how this impacts our lives and keeps us away from the success we were created for. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another week. And um, this week, man, every now and then I, I get a little bit on my soapbox, so to speak. And this just might be one of those days, man. <laughs> this just might be the day. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how these three elements that are so detrimental to your success. Actually, I would say these three things kill your purpose and your dreams the most. The most. This week, I don't know if you all have seen, but if I've seen it, I'm sure a lot of you all have seen it because I'm usually not, you know, up to speed on current events. But we got we got a new mermaid, y'all. <laughs> we have a black mermaid, and I don't know why I find that so funny. I just I'm not used to seeing it, but uh, that was that was uh, quite a surprise. But even more surprising is how the back and forth. Well, I probably shouldn't even be surprised at this point because. Pretty much anything nowadays causes this back and forth. But, and I usually ignore that stuff, man, honestly, because it's a lot going on. I like to you know, keep my mind in other places. But today, today it hit me probably more than it ever has. A specific verse that's in the Bible. You all know all my content. That's where I, that's where I go to. But there's a specific proverb that says, as a man thinks in his heart. So is he. And it's really referring to like the company you keep and, and kind of, you know, relationships with other people, but it's also a principle for self. And it really caused me to think. So I, I want y'all to think about this, right? There's so many people up in arms right now about fair representation. And if you don't know what that means, it's just having representation of, I guess, everyone especially for black people who historically have not had the proper representation. But that's what this whole mermaid thing is about. If you don't know, there's a little mermaid um, retaping or, or recasting and now the mermaid's black. Don't know why that bothers so many people, but it does. And I don't know why so many people are, are proud of that, but they are. But none of that matters. I'm using that as an example. Because I want to I wanna share something with you because you've stopped by to watch this and this is going to help you so much today. Because I got to admit, as a black man, right? People will say, you should, be, you should be interested in fair representation. And for the most part, I am. But what I'm not interested in is, is the argument of fair representation disguised in anger and hate. And I'm going to tell you why. We're going to get back to dreams and purpose here in a, mo in a moment. But since this is a hot topic, I think it's, it's, it's good to address it. But here's why I have a distaste for fair representation that's really disguised as hate and anger. Because anger is one of the biggest distractions to your purpose and mind, to your dreams and mind. Anger is one of the most, the, the biggest distraction. Actually, I will give, I'm going to give you the combo. Here's the trio. Anger. Worry and discouragement, three of the most useless, <laughs> three of the most useless and most deceptive emotions there are. You know, I was, I was thinking today, man, some of my, my least productive days, weeks are when I'm emotionally uneasy, when I'm frustrated, when I'm worried, when I'm discouraged. Those are some of my most unproductive weeks. And here's why. Here's why, because those are three deceiving emotions. Now, anger can be used uh, uh, for good, but it's rare. If, you, if you're angry every day, that's not, you don't have, you're not walking around and get angry, let me tell you. But those three specifically are deceptive. And deception wants you to, wants you to be so wrapped around. Deception wants you to be so focused on what's wrong in your life, what's wrong in society. What's wrong in the government? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Deception wants you to be so focused on what's wrong that you have no energy left 
to fight for what's right. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you think that you are already defeated, what's the point of trying? If you think that you're not good enough, then guess what? If you think that thought long enough, eventually your mind is going to adapt to the idea that you are not good enough. If you think you're not smart enough, guess what? Eventually your mind's going to adapt to the thought that you're not smart enough and that's going to become your reality. That's what I mean by these thought, these things. Our mind, our mind transforms into whatever we tell it to. Whatever we tell it to. And I, I haven't even gotten to the good part yet. Check this out. So back to my story. I started the story. As a black man, right? Over the last two, three years, it's been some, like I, I've had to turn off the TV. I'm just going to be real with y'all. Some will say, well, you need, to stay, you need to stay up to speed on current events. Maybe some of that is true. But I started noticing things about myself, my productivity, my thought process. It just wasn't, it wasn't where it was supposed to be. And today I, I realize exactly why. But let me tell you the story first. So as a black man, I realized the more I looked at this stuff, the more angry I got. The more I looked at some of the you know, police brutality stuff that was just showing over and over and over again. The more, you know, all the movies started coming up where, we, where we're looking at slavery. <clears throat> we're, we're looking at our history. We're looking at all this stuff. We're looking at how our people were treated. And I'm telling you, this has to do with your success and purpose. Stay with me. And I'm looking, I'm watching all this stuff. And then I got in the back of my mind because my foundation is faith. I got in the back of my mind that I'm supposed to love people. But at that moment, when I'm watching all this stuff, and I'm thinking about what my grandparents went through and all this stuff, I find it really hard to love. Because I'm just consumed with anger, frustration. I grew up in one of the poorest cities in Florida. It probably wouldn't have been that way if this, 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 and this went that way. And you just spiral into these, these thoughts of anger of worry, of discouragement. Three deceitful emotions. And check this out. So I'm feeling all these emotions and then I go and read this verse. As a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. I'm going to take you all to the science aspect here. Our brain it's the center of, of logic and emotion, okay? Now, anger, what anger does is it, is it put anger, discouragement, worry, what that does is it puts our brain into survival mode. When, we, when we're experiencing those emotions, our brain goes directly into survival mode. And so we're no longer on the logical side of our brain. And I, one of the examples I read in one of the scientific uh, psychology articles, it was talking about like, I'll give you an example. When we're watching a movie, a scary movie, right? You're watching a scary movie, you're sitting in, in the dark and you hear something rattle at, at the door or something. Now, logically, our mind knows Jason with the hockey mask is not, by all means, nine times, 9.9 .9 times out of 10 is not standing on our door. But the emotional aspect of our brain will make it real. And this is even more so true for, for children. Because our brain has the power to make even something that's not real become real. Stay with me. Our brain has the power to make things that aren't even real come to life. That's why anxiety is a real thing. Anxiety is just a, a, an overcoming of of, a, of an undesirable event that's in the future that we don't want and we stress over. We stress over it, it's discouraging. We worry about it. And oftentimes it's not even real, but our minds are so consumed that we would feel like it is. And when we feel it, it's real to us. So I got to doing some, some digging, right? And, I, and I'm looking at, all these times that I felt like, man, 
I'm frustrated or I'm angry about something. And then I started looking at my days and, and none of it seemed to be productive. And then I realized that when you look at scientifically where those emotions come from in our brain, it's, it's an area called the amygdala. And here's a number I want you to think about, all right? Check out this number. I'm gonna write this number. I left my pen over there. Let me get my pen. Check out this number. Zero. Zero point three percent. This is a number you need to know. You need to know this number. Okay. And here's why. I brought this picture here because I, I didn't believe it when, when I read it. So I had to go look it up because I wanted to know, is this real? Like, is this a real thing? And it is, y'all. Check this out. Here's a picture of what the amygdala looks like in our brain. This is a picture of what the amygdala looks like in our brain. Let me get it here. Oh, Lord, what did I do? Look at that, y'all. I'll make it nice and big. For those of you who are listening, the amygdala is an almond size. You ever had an almond? Our amygdala is the size of an almond in our brain. Okay? Look at this little, the little green thing here. I'm trying to zoom in as much as I can. But those of you who are listening, you know what an almond looks like. If we're talking, percent, if we're talking percentage wise, the amygdala takes up 0.3% of our brain. But here's what happens. When we are worried or we're anger, I mean, we're angry, not or we're anger. When we're worried or we're angry or we're discouraged, what we are in fact doing is we are allowing 0.3% of our brain to lead the way. Meaning we are abandoning 99.7% of our brain. Let me ask you something. If I gave you 99.7% of something to, to create a solution or 0.3% of something to create a solution, which one do you think you have a higher chance of creating a solution with? Which one do you think you have a higher chance of overcoming worry with? Which one do you think you have a higher chance of limiting and reducing stress with? The reason why a lot of us are so annoyed and stressed out and find ourselves in this constant cycle is because the more you look at that thing that causes you to be angry, the more that you think about that thing or that circumstance that causes you to be stressed out, the more that you dwell and you dwell and you dwell as a man thinks, woman and man, as a man thinks, so is he. Meaning, as you think about that, you are limiting your life, you are limiting your purpose, you are limiting your success to only 0.3% of what you were intended for. Ah, like you got to get this. When I got this, I, I, I wanted to slap myself. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. For all the times I've spent wasting time leading my life from an almond size. Look at this again, y'all. An almond size. <laughs> Imagine if I came in front of you and I, and I just, you know, hey, here's a little almond. I want you to follow this around all day. It's incredible. It's incredible. I'm telling you, if we think anything long enough, our mind eventually, eventually our mind will register it as truth. And this is why I say anger, discouragement, worry, that they are deceptive emotions that just rob you of your purpose and your dreams. Because you can't achieve your dreams. You can't become the person that will achieve your dreams if you are only being, if you only have access to 0.3% of your brain. The God-given brain that you've been given. If you are only accessing 0.3%, no wonder, like this thing right here, y'all, those of you listening, I'm holding up my Bible. Like, I ain't trying to tell you what to believe, but I am going to tell you this. This thing is, has always been right. Every time I've searched it and tried to, you know, measure it and see, is this right or is this, can, is this really, is this really something true? 
But it's just, it's so true. That's why we're told not to worry. Because the one who created us knows when you're worrying, you're only using 0.3% of what I gave you. Stop worrying and go use the other 99.7% to come up with a solution. Everything you have is everything you need, man. Everything you have is everything you need. And so if you found yourself consumed by anger or consumed by worry, I done got worked up here, man. I'm sweating a little bit. Y'all done got me excited. Because this is so good. If you've been overwhelmed by those, those emotions, if you felt discouraged, take heart. Because that discouragement is only that discouragement is limiting you to 0.3% of the of <laughs> the power that you have access to. The God-given power in between your ears. And here's what happens. When you can go show other people this, you unlock and unleash their 99.7%. And I'm not saying the, the amygdala is all bad. It's not. But some of us are, are for too long, we, we live in that space. And that's what was happening to me. The more and more I watched this stuff, the more and more I, I didn't have any space to go create a solution. What if you're the solution to fair representation? What if the solution is you using a 99.7% going and starting a business and now you can hire more rep fair representation? I'm seeing people fight online and it's, it's so useless because they're operating from a useless emotion. And it's wasteful of a large percentage that is waiting to churn and burn out some solutions. And so I hope, I hope this was helpful to you. If you found this to be something helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, make sure you comment, leave a comment. I wanna know what do, you, what do you think? Have you experienced the same thing? Have you experienced some of the, some of the things I've, I've uh, went through where you're so frustrated and annoyed <laughs> that you can't even think straight? Have you experienced living out of that 0.3%? If so, I wanna hear about it below. But um, again, I hope this was helpful. Get out there, put aside the discouragement, put aside the anger and the silly arguments, and let's focus on using that 99.7% that God has given us so we can create solutions that will move us closer to the success that we were created for. All right, that's all for this week. I'll see you all same time next week, or well, probably a little earlier, a little late tonight, but as you can see. But hopefully I'll see you same time, same time day next week. Let's say that. See you same day next week, reminding you that success is your destiny. Peace to the next one.